We're going to show you how to build a shed. This is our 6x4 shed. First of all, we've got our base down, which is nice and solid, but we've actually got the wooden shed base. You've got the two gable ends, the one with the door in as well. We've got the two roof panels. We've got the shed felt to make it nice and watertight. And we've got the side panels and even one with a window in. So let's not forget the tools we need for the job. We don't need a great deal of stuff. A drill driver, clamps, Stanley knife and a hammer. So a real good tip is to mark where the floor bearers are so we know where to screw the sides down. And if you look under the side here, you can actually see where they've been nailed to the floor panel, but it just gives you a bit extra to go to. So first the back gable up and we're going to connect the sides to the gable, both sides up, but then we'll do the front gable after. Just three screws, that's all it requires. When we get these two sides attached to the back gable, that gives us something to work from. It makes it really solid and really easy. We will be screwing the whole lot down to the base, but it's important to get all the sides and the gables up and then we can make sure it's all square. It's great to have the clamps because we can make sure both side panels are perfectly aligned before we screw them together. Okay boss, do you want to screw them? So we're getting the window panel up now. You can see it's really quick results, it's coming together really quickly. What we're actually doing here is we're pre-drilling the sides because when we put the screw in, it stops the timber from splitting. So I mentioned earlier about putting the marks on the floor where the bearers run across the floor because this is where we're going to fix the sides to the base. I'm going to pre-drill them but I'm not going to fix them yet. And another thing that's really important, on the sides there's an overlap of the panel at the bottom. It's important that it overlaps the edge of the shed base and pushes tight up. Right, we're ready for the gable. That's it, got it. We're going to screw the sides and gables to the base now. So these are what we call ridge rails. These go across the top of the shed. These give us something to fasten the, the roof panels to. So let's get them in. So as you can see, these are going in and there is a pre-cut piece in the top of the gable for them to sit into. So what we're doing here is we're connecting the two roof rails, we're screwing them together, just makes them nice and solid. We're ready for the roof panels now, but what's really important with these other two roof battens, these roof rails, these need to fix one on each roof panel down the long edge and we're going to nail these on. And what these are for is when we put the felt on, it gives us something to nail the felt to. So that's both roof panels done, it's time to get them into position. So there you go, we've got both roof panels ready to be nailed on. And as you can see, the batten we put onto the roof panel is at the bottom here. So we can actually nail this side up now. We've made sure it's nice and square and it meets, the two panels meet and they're not protruding over each other. Really important. What's really important is we put enough nails in, we don't want the roof blown away. So what I've done, I've put six down the sides and I've put 10 across the top on both pieces. So now we're ready for the felt to get it nice and watertight. And what's really important is we get this the right way up. It's more minerally on one side and that's the side we need facing up. The other side is obviously down on the wood. We've got the first piece of felt up and the way we've done this is we've actually nailed the felt to the back edge of the batten on the bottom of the roof panel. That enables us then to pull the felt nice and tight and nail it over the ridge. Now as you can see here, the felt goes beyond the ridge and down the other side and when we put the other piece on, that'll come up and go down that side. That gives us double the thickness to make it even more waterproof at the top. And we've also got an even amount hanging over either side. Now we can get some nails in the top. And what I've done, I've started in the middle and I'm going to work outwards, it just makes it a little bit easier. So the felt's on the roof now, we've got this overhang to deal with and this is going to be covered what we, with what we call fascias. But what's really important is we don't want to make any cuts and split the felt. So what we're going to do, we're just going to simply fold the felt over like so. The same at the top. And when we nail this, this fascia on here, 
We're going to make sure we get a nail through the batten on the side of the roof and a nail through the batten, the ridge batten at the top. What comes supplied is this little diamond. That's going to go onto there. A good tip for this as well is to pre-drill it so it doesn't split. And all we're going to do then is repeat what we've done here on the back of the shed. Right, it's time to fit the door. But before we do that, I've got David here. He's just doing the finishing touches, which are these finishing strips that go onto the corners here. So there's four for each corner, and then there's one that goes down the joint between the two panels in the middle. So right, the door. These are the hinges. We've got three T hinges, and we're going to put them in line with the three cross rails at the back. So I'm going to square that up along there bang all the screws in on all three hinges and then we can put the door into position. So there we go, we've got the door, we've got a nice even gap all the way around. Let's screw the hinges on. It's also worth probably just putting one screw in each hinge just to make sure it all shuts and opens properly. So that's the door on, all working properly. Now for security, we need to fit this hasp and staple. Now, in the past, I've seen people put that on like that onto the hasp and you can access these screws. Now, you think about a burglar who's going to come and undo those screws. It's really important that it goes that way around and then the hasp covers the screws so there's no access to those. So we're nearly finished. We've got one little job to do and that's to fit the window. Now, just a couple of safety precautions. You are going to be handling a piece of glass. Make sure you've got some gloves on. And another good tip is to keep this out of the way until you're ready for it. Before we fit the window, what we need to do, we've got some bits of extra timber here. We've got, we need to form a rebate for the glass to sit into. And these are the ones that are slightly wider, but before they can go in, we've also got this piece, which is gonna form a window sill and a bit of a drip for the water to run off and not damage the shed. A couple of nails in that to secure it into place. So now we're going to form the rebate with these pieces. There's two shorter ones and two longer ones. Put the shorter ones in first, that's the one across the bottom and the one across the top, and just simply nail them into place. A good tip from me is I put a bead of clear silicon on the back of there, and that does two jobs for me. It holds the glass into place while I fit the other battens that hold the glass in, and it also stops it rattling in the wind. So this glass here is gonna be trapped in with these battens. Now, in the instructions, it says to nail these there and across the bottom. But a good tip from me is, I, what I do is I pre-drill these and I put screws in them because the last thing you want is a hammer against the glass and the chance of it breaking. So there you go, all finished. And it's a lovely little neat six by four shed that's been really easy to build. But just remember, like anything wooden, it needs to be looked after. So a good treatment with some wood preservative, it'll last you for years.